Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It is a wonderful Tuesday afternoon. How are we feeling? How are you feeling, Rishi? I'm doing great, man. Um, I had some I had some Mexican food earlier today, and uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cook soon. I I brought some ingredient. I bought some ingredients to to make some food at home the next couple of days. Very exciting. More cost effective. Very uh, much. What about you? What are you up to? Let me tell you some. Let me let me put you guys on. Uh, L and L Barbecue. True. Hawaiian Barbecue Place, off Regents Road, right next to campus. Uh, oh my goodness! I ordered a chicken katsu plate. I got like a. I swear, like a pound, pound and a half of chicken for like sixteen dollars, and it was delectable. Yeah, so, good sauce too. Good sauce. Good sauce. That's what I, I haven't been saying. there in like two years, man. But uh, not not a sponsor, by the way. Not a sponsor, guys. But not um, sponsored. I I should go back. I should go back. You're making me hungry, man. I just ate, but you're making me hungry. Yeah, happy to make you hungry, Rishi. Um, all right. Well, today, the plan is simple. Um, let me turn off the waiting room. Uh, finish geometry. That is our plan. Um, we got one more day of this, and then after the end of today, uh, we will be four-sixths of the way done. Uh, we'll just have functions and their graphs to go over, and we'll have exponentials and logs to go over. Um, but both of those should be relatively short topics compared to what we've talked about. So we're almost done. We're almost over the hump. So yeah. get, get hyped. Get, you know what? You know what? Get hyped. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, today, uh, as I mentioned in the Discord, it's going to be a little bit more of a challenging topic for some people, maybe not for you, but for 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 some. And then, yeah, the next two topics are a little bit shorter. Um, speaking of which, the way we know that is uh, just on the website for the MPE, there isn't that much to these last two modules. So just as a reminder, just as a quick little check-in, um, this is what we've been doing, right? So we started out with linear, we took about uh, a day, or, or two to cover these three modules, and then um, we took a day or to do day or two to do rationals, and then a day or two to do um, polynomials. And we're going to finish up with geometry today. So if you're here yesterday, you would have seen us do module one, which is pretty much volume, area, and perimeter. Uh, module two, which is talking about uh, basic characteristics of triangles and basic kinds of triangles. And then today we're going to be talking about congruence and similarity. Um, so the the course website is is pretty well laid out. If I'm being quite honest, you know they 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 tell you exactly what's going on. The names aren't super helpful. Um, you know geometry is geometry or geom, but like F N G R, it's not really clear what that is. But if you kind of go over and click on the modules, you'll see that it's functions, right? Um, but it's well really well laid out. I like it because. Uh, it tells you, okay, three modules, and then each of these you have a very descriptive title for each of these lessons. Um, today, we're going to be doing module three. So if we were to be like, okay, module three, what's the first thing that I want to learn? Um, is going to be congruence, right? We see discovering congruence, applying congruence, and then kind of like the second half is going to be similarity. Um, so you can go ahead and click. And then the way this thing is, this website is laid out, um, is you can go through and they'll give you a little introductions. So if we were like, okay, what is congruence? What does that word mean? We click on that first thing. Uh, we, they're talking about transformations. Um, then they kind of ask you, okay, draw a triangle on a piece of paper. I try to cut out transformations that you're doing. Um, they, they walk you through something, right? They, they introduce you to the topic. 
Um, and then they're asking you questions about it. And, and I won't go through the entire website um, because we also have a worksheet which goes through the same material. Um, but the idea is if you go onto each of these lessons, you'll get an introduction to transformations. You, you can watch a video about how that relates to congruence. You'll see some practice. Uh, and then you, you can make connections and, and kind of synthesize this information with different topics. Uh, so I just wanted to really quickly kind of highlight this, this website for you guys. Uh, it's, it's a very useful and straightforward website. Um, if you ever have free time between now and when you take the MPE, uh, this is a great place to just go and um, review the topics that are for sure going to be on the MPE. Right? This is a, a handmade website for you guys. Uh, this, is, this is for students taking the MPE. Uh, so yeah. Um, any any questions with the website? Has anyone has anyone checked out the website? Thumbs up if you've seen this before. The link for this is in the Discord. Cool, cool. A few people. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just wanted to you know it's week two and and we're getting towards the end here. So uh, looking ahead, yeah, as Nick said, we're going to be doing uh, functions and exponents slash log logs going forward. Nick, anything else you want to say about the website? No. Nice. I like that. That's cold enough. Um, cool. Well, if that is all, I'm going to go ahead and start with some congruency theorems. So as I mentioned yesterday, Something that comes up a lot in geometry are triangles. Oh, triangles, cool. So uh, primarily when we're gonna be talking about congruence and similarity, we're gonna be using theorems that have to do with triangles. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna go through and explain some of these theorems. Uh, these are ways to tell if a triangle is congruent or similar. So congruent uh, is a pretty big vocab word, I will say. Uh, it pretty much means uh, identical. So if two triangles are uh, congruent, they are the exact same. A really good example of that is the side, side, side theorem. So if you have a triangle and all three sides are the exact same, um, they're the same length and in the same order, if you, if you want to say it like that, um, they are identical, right? They're the same triangle. There's just two copies of it, right? Uh, these lines here, just as a reminder, uh, mean, mean they're, they're a way of indicating that two things are similar. Uh, and, and or I shouldn't say similar in this case. I should say they're the same uh, exact thing. So this side here, which is marked by the three lines, is the exact same. It is identical or congruent, if you will, to this side here because they both have three lines. Uh, this side down here is the same as this side over here, and then this side is the same as that side. So one of the theorems that will help us tell whether a triangle is congruent in a mathematical fashion, not by looking, back, looking at it, but by actually proving that it's the same, is the side-side-side theorem. This one's pretty intuitive because uh, you're pretty much saying, okay, if three sides are the same, then yeah, it's going to be the same uh, triangle. And moving on, uh, we're going to cover a couple different, uh, more complicated uh, theorems. So these theorems, um, I do recommend kind of like writing out a list and, and seeing if you can remember these theorems. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just start with what they are. Right? Uh, we have next the angle side angle theorem. So if you have a side and you have an angle before it and an angle after it, then because this is a triangle, you by definition know that like these two remaining sides, these two remaining sides, if they come in at this given angle, they're going to meet at a kind of predetermined point. They're all, they're going to meet at this third point. So even if you don't know uh, that these other two sides and this third angle over here are the same for both triangles, uh, you know you have enough information just based on that one side, right? It kind of makes sense, right? If you if you draw a line, you come in a certain amount. You come in a certain amount. Uh, those two uh, lines are going to intersect at a certain point, if this is a triangle, right? 
If this is a square, that might not be the case. But for triangles, the angle side angle theorem holds. Um, note that the, the order of the angles and the sides does matter. So when you're saying angle side angle, that means you have to look at your triangle and then go in order, right? So you, you look at an angle uh, that is found in both triangles, right? Then you find a side. So, so one of the sides adjacent to that starting one, that starting angle, uh, have to be also congruent. And then the third word is angle, right? So which means the one after that uh, also has to be congruent, right? So you can't just find any three angles and sides, uh, two angles and one side. It has to be in the right order, right? Angle, side, angle. Does that kind of make sense? The order, the order matters. You, you guys get that? Cool, cool, cool. Um, good. Well, that's a, that's a mistake that some students make. So if you got that, then you're in good shape. Uh, moving on, SAS. So this is a side angle side. Essentially, a very similar kind of thing. If you have a side, you have another side with an angle in between them. So you're pretty much saying you have two lengths. Do you know what length they are? Um, because they're the same. And you, you set them a certain distance apart in terms of like radially, they're, they're a certain angle apart, then you know that there must be a third side uh, that will join the two of them together to make a triangle just by virtue of the fact that this is a triangle, right? Um, you can clearly see that this is a triangle. That is something you can assume, right? So let's say they gave you a triangle. And uh, yeah, let's say, let's say they gave you, like, if you look down here, let's say they gave you a triangle that looked like this. It's not really a triangle. If they give you a triangle that looks like this and a triangle that looks like this, and they ask you, oh, are these two uh, congruent, which means like, are they the same triangle? Then even though you don't know what this, this angle over here is, and you don't know what like this angle over here is, and you don't know what this angle is, you don't know what the length of these, these two sides are, you would still be able to prove that they're congruent just based off the SAS theorem, the side angle side theorem. Then we have angle angle side. This one's kind of weird because uh, you have an angle and then another angle, right? Uh, and so you don't know you don't know about that side in between them, right? It's angle and then the next angle uh, immediately after that, and then the side, right? So so the order of events is important. Right? So angle, angle, side. Um, you don't know about this one in between. However, this theorem still holds. So pretty much so far as a review, we have SSS, SSS, ASA, SAS, AAS. Um, and then kind of a weird one, we have the hypotenuse leg theorem. So when we have a hypotenuse, which is the kind of third side that is opposite a right angle in a right triangle, um, if we have the hypotenuse and we have a leg, so this is kind of like a side-side theorem, except one of those sides is the hypotenuse and one of those is the leg. So we just call it that, we call it the hypotenuse leg theorem. Uh, then we have two congruent right triangles. Right, so the hypotenuse is going to be that side that is opposite, opposite the angle that is ninety degrees. Um, so this is just a special case because, um, well, if you really want, if you really want to think about the because, uh, we have two identical angles, right? We have an angle and an angle that are the same in both of these. These two angles are in fact congruent; they're both ninety degrees, as noted by that. Um, that box, that, that kind of box note, notes a 90 degree angle. And then we have uh, one leg that is the same and then a second legs, leg that, or a second side that's the same. So essentially this is a kind of specialized version of the angle uh, side side theorem. However, note that ASS is not a theorem, right? So we can't just take any uh, angle side and side uh, or any side, side, and angle, if you want to go in this order. 
um, because uh, that's just not a theorem, right? So don't get confused. Our last theorem to add onto our little handy dandy list is HL. So it's a special thing for right triangles. And those are our five theorems. Um, I do recommend trying to uh, memorize those at some point uh, because you're not always gonna have a list handy. Like, oh, uh, what are those five theorems again? Um, you know, if you wanna think about like strategies to remember it, you know, SSS is pretty intu intuitive. And then ASA and SAS kind of think, I think of them as a pair where you go like, um, you know, ASA, it's like alternating letters, um, which is, I mean, it's not a particularly special thing, but you know, ASA and SAS are both theorems. You just kind of remember those as a pair. Um, and then you remember, uh, you remember these two kind of by remembering that ASS is not a theorem, right? There's not a theorem. In fact, it's also uh, not something you should say ever in your life. It's not a good word to say. Uh, so since we're remembering that we're not going to use uh, ASS, we are going to remember AAS, right? And then we are going to remember HL because it's kind of like a version of ASS that is actually valid. Um, so I group those two together. I group, you group those two together. And then I kind of remember um, SSS because it's kind of the easy one, right? If the three sides are the same, then you've got congruent triangles. So uh, if that mnemonic works for you, uh, remembering that you aren't going to use ASS, then go for it. If you just want to remember them by pure brute strength, um, you know, teach their own, teach their own. So you might be wondering, okay, well, we have SSS, but what about AAA? What happens when you have AAA, three angles that are same? Um, well, that brings us to similarity. Similarity. So <clears throat> when a triangle is considered similar, um, it contains all the same angle and side ratios, but not the same side lengths. So if we have three um, identical angles, or even two identical angles for a triangle, um, then by definition, we have two similar triangles. So pretty much they're scaled versions of each other, right? Uh, this guy is just the same version as this guy, except a little bit smaller. Um, they're similar, but not identical. They're not the same. They're not congruent. Cool. So the first one is AA, angle, angle. The next one is the side angle side. So this is SAS, the SAS theorem, uh, which is when we have a side and then an angle and then a side. Then as long as that ratio of those sides is the same and there's an angle that's the same in between them, uh, then we, we can prove similarity. So when two triangles have the same angle, the sides enclosing it have the same ratio to one another, they're considered similar. So one thing I will note, and this is a pretty big thing, is for similarity, the sides, uh, sides have to be, I guess, like equal ratio is what I'd say, equal ratio. And then angles have to be congruent. So the angles have to be exactly the same. Uh, so the sides and angles get special treatment, right? Um, the sides are allowed to be like not exactly the same, but, uh, you know, the same like ratio between each other. Uh, you can kind of see here where you can mathematically prove that. So the length of AB over here uh, divided by the length of DE over here is the same as the same like corresponding ratio over there. Sorry, I know I'm drawing, I'm drawing all over these triangles, but essentially this divided by that is the same as this divided by that. So the big triangle and the small triangle have the same ratio of side lengths. <clears throat> <clears throat> same thing will happen for uh, side, side, side. So if all three sides have the same ratios of side lengths between two triangles, then they are similar. Then they are similar. So note that we can have similarity between triangles, uh, and we can also have congruency. And think about uh, this just for a second, just 
consider the fact that um you know how those two could interplay right so it's the same thing as kind of like a, a square and a rectangle right if we have um two similar triangles let's say we have a triangle like that and then a triangle like that and we're using one of these theorems let's say like the angle angle theorem so let's draw the same kind of relationship here you kind of prove that these two are similar um they can be similar uh but that does not mean that they're congruent however if two uh triangles are congruent so if we were to get the same kind of triangle same lengths everything uh same angles all that jazz a bit rough a bit messy messy looking but if we were to get these two and they're congruent and prove use using one of those theorems we, we prove that they're congruent um then they're going to be similar as well, right? Because the ratio between them, the ratio of size between the two triangles is just one, right? They're the same exact uh, triangle. So if something's congruent, uh, it's by definition going to be similar. But if something's similar, it's not always going to be congruent. It's, does that kind of make sense? Cool, cool, cool. If there's any questions, feel free to ask. So in summary, for congruency, we had these five guys up here. And then for similarity, we have angle, angle. We have SAS, so S-A-S, -S, side, side, side. And then I, I missed one up here. Let me just add it up here. Uh, we have, well, actually, no, I didn't miss one. Sorry. Uh, we have... This is just three, I believe. Yeah, angle, angle, side, angle, side, and side, side, side. Okay, cool. So that's um, congruency and similarity. So yeah, same thing with congruency as with similarity. I do recommend you you try to memorize those theorems. Um, there's, I believe, eight of them total. So hopefully that's not like super hard to memorize. Uh, try to write them down and, and recall, you know, just like after dinner tonight, be like, okay, how many of these can I remember? Um, and, and, and test yourself, right? Uh, but these aren't super hard theorems to use. You know, usually the information is given in a problem, uh, whether, you know, the, these this side is the same as this side or whatever the case may be. Um, but what's going to stump people is not like two triangles. They give you like, okay, this triangle and this triangle, uh, and they tell you exactly which angles and sides are the same. You know, <clears throat> they might give you uh, something like this, right? Uh, a, tr a triangle such as that, and then a triangle such as that. Almost looks like a baseball diamond. Um, and then they say, are these two triangles, um, are these two triangles similar or congruent or both or neither? Um, which I'll ask you guys. Well, what do you think? You know, I didn't really draw give you a lot of information, but I want you to tell me: Are these two congruent, similar, or neither or both? So drop your answer in the chat or speak up if you have a question or you, you want to say your answer out loud. Um, but chat is totally cool. You can, if you're feeling nervous, you can DM your answer to me as well. Cool. Oh. So um, the answer is, in fact, uh, down here, HL, right? So if we have a hypotenuse, or well, if we have the a, a hypotenuse of something, um, we we which is, which is this guy right here, um, we have the H. We don't really know if the leg is the same, right? We 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 have a hypotenuse and we have an angle, right? What do we think? What do we think?
Yeah, okay, so they're both nine degrees. You have this guy here, and you have this guy here, and then we have a hypotenuse. So we have like hypotenuse and an angle, right? Yeah, they share hypotenuse. Mm, okay, okay, so Angelica is using some out of the box thinking. Um, so if one leg was shorter, let's say this this leg was shorter, then then the angle would not be nine degrees. Um, so if you look at our handy dandy little list of congruencies and, <clears throat> and congruencies and uh, similarities, we have angle angle, side angle side, side side side. And up here we have hypotenuse and leg. Cool. Well, I'll tell you right now. Um, sometimes you might not be able to use a theorem, right? So I think if you go through our list, right, side, 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 we can't really use that one. Uh, angle, side, angle, we can't really use that one. We don't have, we, we pretty much have like two pieces of information. However, um, this is a kind of question that they might ask you in a test that, that would trip some people up. Um, and the reason is you can't necessarily just use um, the theorem. What you'd have to do is kind of use your, your logic. You'd have to walk through it and, and explain using your words. Um, so in this example, we have we have uh, one congruent congruent angle, which is that 90 degree angle, and one congruent hypotenuse I ought to news. Therefore, the triangles, I would say, are congruent because if they were, or I guess if, uh, what can I say, if the two pairs of legs from each triangle were different lengths, this wouldn't be a right triangle. Right? So long story short, using your theorems is only gonna only gonna get you so far. I know that's all I've spent <laughs> this whole time talking about is these theorems, but um, those those theorems are gonna get you, you know, 50% of the way there, but you're not always just gonna be able to rely um, on your on your theorems, on like the basic, like kind of um, face value knowledge, right? So sometimes you're gonna have to look deeper. And so I, I do commend you guys, um, like an Angelica and Eileen, I believe. Yeah, Eileen in the chat uh, for, for kind of working through it, right? Um, yes, this doesn't fit one of our cases perfectly. However, we can use um, reasoning to go through it. So sometimes we're gonna see some examples where we can kind of just Use a theorem, sometimes we can't. Cool. One last theorem, the triangle mid-segment theory. Triangles formed by from joining the midpoints of their sides are similar and scaled down by a factor of two. So essentially, if you take the midpoint of each side and you were just to draw another triangle, we've got the same triangle, except you'll see it's kind of flipped upside down and it's also shrunk by a factor of two. Um, all of the sides are half as long, right? So this side was eight, so therefore this side's gonna be four. This side was 10, therefore this side's gonna be five. And then whatever this side was, X, this would be like X over two, uh, which can be a pretty useful tool, pretty useful tool. Cool. Any questions about theorems or anything I talked about so far?
Well, I think that's good news then. Uh, if there's no questions, let's take a look at some examples. All right, let's see. So we've got 3.1 and 3.4 for this guy. 3.1 is uh, just talking about uh, congruency. So we're asking congruency. And then 3.4 is a little bit longer of a word problem. Um, 3.1, I'll just kind of do real quick with everyone. Um, let's let's continue to use like audience participation if you're if you're feeling confident or even if you're not. Um, for number one, right? We have these two triangles. We have congruent side here, congruent side here, uh, and then a congruent angle. So, uh, can someone tell me uh, are these congruent? Uh, and I guess just tell me which theorem you're using. These two congruent. Um, we're using the hypotenuse leg theorem because they're both right triangles and they share two sides. Cool. Yeah. Uh, great job, Angelica. So yeah, it's going to be hypotenuse leg. Uh, they say justify why. And so, yeah, I mean, a brief kind of explanation would be um, since we have a right angle in both of these triangles, and both of them have a um, congruent hypotenuse found opposite of that uh, right angle. Um, and then we also have a, a side, a leg that is congruent. Then um, in order for this third side to kind of like meet up and make an actual triangle in each of these, uh, we would have to have two congruent triangles. Um, so yeah, any sort of like verbal explanation or a written out explanation is good. But at the very least, you're going to want to know hypotenuse leg, right? Anytime you see a, a right triangle, you should probably be asking yourself, okay, is this hypotenuse leg or not? Uh, there are also other theorems you could use for a right triangle, but uh, hypotenuse leg is the only one that'll specifically apply to right triangles. Uh, what about number two? Number two, what are we thinking? We have uh, an angle, a side, and an angle. So we would kind of want to double check okay like is this is this following any of our patterns that we know yeah asa uh so i kind of just said it but if we have in order an angle a side an angle then we would have congruency um so just note uh none of the, not, both of these were in fact congruent but just note that it, you know if there's like a gap for example if there's like a angle and then a side but then like this angle wasn't current and congruent but instead like this angle was in con was congruent uh then the theorem wouldn't work uh, however in this case actually we can kind of use like basic geometry to understand that these two angles are also congruent so yeah this would be angle side angle cool well thank you for your participation um always good to kind of check in um let's see looking ahead what I want to do is let's do number 3.4. Um, real quick, I'm going to make, I'll make, I'll make three breakout rooms for today. A uh, quick little breakout room. I want you guys to take a look at 3.4. Uh, I believe you should be able to share your whiteboard in each of these breakout rooms. So if one brave soul from each breakout room could just create a whiteboard, um, and and kind of like just draw a, a quick little diagram describing the situation read through it as a group uh again you know introduce yourself major college whatever feel free to chit chat about you know whatever but um try try to work through this problem uh if you have any questions we'll be me, me and nick will be popping through and uh and yeah so so let's see we'll we'll break for about uh 10 minutes here and yeah, uh, I'm going to open all rooms now. So join whatever breakout room you're assigned to. We'll call you back in about 10 minutes.
Um, yeah, so so here's a solution for that problem. Uh, I, I'm personally a visual person, so I like to just go ahead and draw a diagram, right? Um, I like to be like, okay, here's the person, here's what's going on with the person, they're here, oh, they're, they're over here. And then uh, the top of the building is over here. So these are the kind of like points that we're working with in order to draw like what's going on. Um, I would just go ahead and draw a diagram. All right, so we have five and a half feet by five feet over here. And then we have the mirror in between these two triangles. And then we have 20 feet and the height of the building, which I just kind of labeled as X. Um, and so we know these two triangles are similar right? Because uh, this angle is going to be uh, congruent to this angle. Um, and we know the ratio of these two sides is going to be the same, right? Uh, just by virtue of the fact that it's a... Oh, Nick, you got kicked from the Zoom. Uh, whatever, whatever shall we do? Are you back? No. Okay. Um, so yeah, what I did is just set a ratio. Uh, so I set the bottom side uh, sides equal to each other, and then I set the uh, this side and this side, whatever the heights to equal to each other, uh, or ratio the two of them, for lack of a better term. Uh, so you multiply, you know, cross multiply this times that, and this times that, and you'll get five x equals uh, twenty times five point five, which I believe would be uh, one hundred and. 10, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then you would divide by uh, five for both sides. And so you should get 22 feet to the height of the building, which if you kind of just do like a fact check, um, right? If, if the distance over here is five feet and then it's like times like 1.1 1 .1, uh, is the height. She's 5.5 uh, 5 feet tall, which is like five, six, five feet, six inches. Uh, then it would make sense that if you're 20 feet away, from the mirror, then the building would be like times 1.1. .1. So like 20 times 1.1, .1, which is 22 feet. Any questions? Anything else come up? Any any curveballs from the break, breakout room? Well, uh, I did want to make a note. Uh, I know my explanation earlier for this little problem. Oh, this is the... <laughs> This is the wrong notes. My my fault. My fault. Uh, for this problem over here, um, I don't know if you guys were dying of curiosity, but I sure was. I was very curious about like what exactly you would use to, um, to prove this that the, that uh, these two triangles are congruent. So if you have like a right triangle and another right triangle, and you got this kind of like angle in the or the, this side in the middle that's shared, right? These are two congruent sides. A little bit more simplified of a way. To, to say that would just be the fact that by definition of the uh, hypotenuse, like we know a hypotenuse is when we have a right angle and then we have opposite that right angle, some sort of side, uh, it could be anywhere like, you know, let's just draw it over there. We have a side opposite a hypotenuse. This is a, a 90 degree angle. If we were to look on the other side of that line, 180 degrees around to the other side uh, and draw another right angle, which has that same hypotenuse, right? Same, like this is 90 degrees. Um, if we draw lines from this 90 degrees to that line, this 90 degree to that line, this 90 degree to that line, if we were to make our shape that we have in that problem I came up down here, um, by virtue of the corresponding angles theorem, which pretty much says if we have two parallel lines, then there and they're bisected by some sort of uh, third line that's not parallel, then this angle and this angle will be congruent, this angle and this angle will be congruent. And so now we can use a theorem that really shows that these are uh, two congruent triangles, right? We could use the uh, angle side angle theorem, for example. Um, and so the reason we know these two lines are parallel is because uh, this angle and this angle are each 90 degrees and they are opposite each other because uh, this angle is opposite the hypotenuse, which means it's uh, 180 degrees away or, or it's on the opposite side. And 
this angle is 180 degrees from this, which means this angle over here and this angle over here are, um, I guess, 180 degrees from 180 degrees. Uh, essentially, they are 360 degrees uh, from each other. And so that would kind of kind of prove that these two lines are parallel. So uh, that is the corresponding angles theorem. Uh, just wanted to clarify that for you guys. I know it was a little bit of a, I pretty much just made up the problem, uh, but I wanted to give you guys an answer nonetheless. Nick, are you back? Ruth, Tim, Nick, is your iPad? Uh... My, my iPad's here. You can hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I don't know what happened, but my Zoom is just no longer working on my computer. So I'll have to talk to my iPad. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you still good to go? I'm good to go. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm going to stop sharing and uh, pass it over to Nick then. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening. I don't know if you guys are as curious as I was, but I wanted to at least finish up that section then. All right. All you, brother. All right. Wonderful. Uh, let me share. Keep One second. All right. Okay. There's a question. It seems very important. Okay. It's about yes. building. Uh, Go ahead, shoot, shoot your question. There's something like this. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, no, my fault. Yeah, yeah, so I, I missed the question. I was uh, distracted by Nick saying that he got kicked from the Zoom. Um, why isn't her eye height 5'6 and not 5'5? Five, uh, five? Uh, yes, good question. So her height is five foot six inches um, and I wrote that as 5.5, like five and a half feet because uh, six inches is has half of a foot. So if you're converting from like five, like feet and inches and then to, you know, like decimal form, then yeah, yeah. Okay, no worries. That's uh, it's kind of a tricky thing. I'm sure you're not the only one who, you know, had that question. All good. Good, glad you, glad you like re-asked your question. My apologies for missing it. All right, cool. So I'm thinking that it's worth our time to do some of the problem set together. Um, we're gonna run through some of the problems. First thing we're gonna do actually is not related to geometry, but was a problem from the previous topic on polynomials that I think is worth uh, sort of covering how to do because it's likely to be a problem and we kind of glossed over it. And what this topic is, is sketching uh, functions of polynomials based on their roots. Um, so we're gonna sketch two polynomials and see what we can see. Um, now, obviously not gonna be perfect, but as long as we get the major points, we'll probably get credit on our assignment. Um, okay, cool. So if we're gonna sketch a polynomial function, um, the first thing we can look at are zeros. Um, now, if we plug in uh, y equals zero, where we wanna know all of the values of x, of x that give us zero, these are those values. These values being negative three, negative two, and positive one. Um, these are things we can just plot straight away uh, and don't even have to think twice about. Uh, then we want to know what happens at the endpoints of our polynomial. Uh, we remember it; uh, it's all determined by the leading term, right? In this case, if we were to multiply everything out, the leading term would be a negative x to the fourth. Do we recall what that's going to look like in terms of end behavior? 
and I I cannot see chat by the way um on my iPad. So Rishi you may have to say. But what is that going to look like in end behavior? Okay, both sides down, McDonald's. Um, yeah, it's going to look both sides down, right? Down on this side, down on this side. Um, so we can kind of just sketch that behavior to some extent here. Then we can use the fact that it passes it has to pass through all of these points. So we know that on the left side, it comes up from negative infinity, crosses at minus three, and then has to cross again at minus two, right? So to some extent, it's gonna do something like that, right? Then it has to hit minus one, but the tricky thing is, we have two factors of minus one. Now, what this actually means in terms of graphing, if we have a factor with multiplicity two or higher, uh, it's not actually gonna cross the x-axis at this point. It's gonna be reflected backwards, um, at least for multiplicity two. I'm not sure about higher ones. What that means, when we're graphing is this is going to come down here and then at some point switch back up and then turn around at x equals zero and go down towards minus infinity. So this is like what it's going to look like. McDonald's. I'm loving it. Uh, we'll do the same thing. In this case, with 0 at minus 3, minus 2, and positive 1 over here. Here, our leading term, if we multiply it out, is going to be a positive x cubed, which means that we're going to come from negative infinity on the left side, go off to positive infinity on the right side. going to look something like that. You have to go up and then back down. Swoop low and then go off like that. And that is likely what both of these functions are going to look like. And so the important takeaway from this problem, and I, I wish we had uh, covered it in the polynomial section, um, but graph based on the zeros and based on the end behavior, if you're being asked to sketch, if you really want to get jiggy with it, you can plug in x equals zero and find the y-intercept. In this case, plugging in x equals zero here, or x equals zero, y would equal, let's see, three times two times minus one times minus one times minus one. So y would equal minus six, actually. And so I could adjust my graph. I now have a new point I can put on there. And so I can graph based on that fact and be maybe a little more accurate in how I represent my graph. Okay. Here for x equals zero, y equals, looks like minus six once again. So we're gonna have the same kind of behavior. Boom. Okay, cool. All right, just wanted to do a quick review there, make sure that topic is good. And 
because I can't see chat, feel free to unmute or Rishi. Let me know if, if anyone has a question. Okay, cool. So moving into actual geometry, we want to solve for the lengths A, B, C, and D using some special right triangles that we're familiar with and using the known lengths and angles. Now, when it says that, what it's probably referring to is if we look right here, we can clearly see a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And if we look right here, we can clearly see a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, yeah, so how can we use some of the relations we're already familiar with? Well, let's start with this guy over here, this uh, 45, 45, 90 guy. Well, we know for a 45, 45, 90, then these sides are going to be equal, and this side is going to equal the leg length times root 2. We can use this to get the length of A. A times root 2 equals 24. So A equals 24 divided by the square root of 2. Or another way we often write it, we multiply the top and bottom by root 2 because we don't like to have radicals in the denominator. And so we'll end up with 20, actually 24 root 2 over 2 or 12 root 2. So that's A. We also know that this is 12 root 2. Now, just kind of by observation here, we have these lines are making right angles with uh, that bottom line. And what we have in the middle is clearly a rectangle, right? Using the fact that it's a rectangle, opposite sides and rectangles are equal. So moving on to B, we can just say that B equals 20. Right. It should be equal. It's a rectangle. Also, that should give us that D equals 12 root 2 equals A. Because it's a rectangle, the opposite side uh, should be equal. Finally, we can use the 30, 60, 90 triangle we have uh, for a uh, 30, 60, 90. Uh, this line is x. The line opposite 60 is x root 3. The hypotenuse is 2 times x. In this case, c is our shortest length, which we can call x in that diagram. And d is x times root 3. In other words, c times root 3 is equal to d. c is equal to, let's see, d is 12 root 2 over root 3. We can simplify, multiply the top and bottom by root 3. We're going to get 12 times square root of 6 on the top over 3 or 4 root 6. And that should be it. A is 12 root 2. OK. Any questions on anything we did in that problem, uh, feel free to unmute um, 
message Rishi. Uh, hopefully I will <laughs> be able to hear them before I get too deep in another problem. Okay, cool. So let's do problem three, where we have two triangles here and we have a bunch of unknowns that we wanna solve for. Let's see. And I think the order that they're given to us in is kind of suggestive. We're probably gonna to wanna to solve for these things in order. Starting with angle A. Well, angle A looks like the only unaccounted for angle in this triangle on the left. We know all the angles have to add up to 180. So subtracting the angles we know from 180 and looking at the remainder should give us A. In this case, 50 degrees is our answer. OK. Next, we want to find x. Well, we have a right triangle. So our friend Pythagoras tells us that we can evaluate for x using the Pythagorean theorem. where x is the square root of three squared plus one, which is 10. And that doesn't have a nice simplification or anything. We just know that x is equal to the square root of 10. Sine of 40, we can think of Sokotoa. And remember that sine is opposite over adjacent. So sine of 40 is the opposite side, which is one over, sorry, I said opposite adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite side of one over root 10, which we can rewrite as root 10 over 10 uh, to make it a little more proper. Tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, opposite in this case being three, adjacent to A is one, so tangent is just three. And I don't know if we ever mentioned, but tangent can be thought of as kind of like the, the slope of the line. So if the opposite is much larger than the adjacent, we're gonna have a large number which indicates a large slope in the direction of that, that opposite side. And you can see this line is pretty steep uh, in, that, in that direction. Okay, cosine 40 is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's gonna be three over root 10 or three root 10 over 10. Angle B. Uh, we're going to have something very similar as before, which is 180 minus 90 minus 30 gives us 60. And what do you know? We have a 30, 60, 90. So we don't even have to do trig. We kind of just know what everything should be. Why the short side is going to be half of the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90, 4 over 2. Y should be two. And then Z or the longer of the two legs is going to be the shorter leg times root three. So two times root three. Sine of 30 opposite over hypotenuse is going to be the opposite of 30 is two. And the hypotenuse is four. So this gives us one half. Tangent of angle B opposite over adjacent is going to be Z over Y. Two thirds over two, which gives root three. And finally, cosine of 30 is going to be Z over four or uh, two root three over four or root three divided by two. 
Okay. You're going to see these guys pop up a lot. 30, sine and cosine of 30, sine and cosine of 60, sine and cosine of 45. Those are probably going to be some of the uh, angles you see the most. So hopefully at some point you'll have these uh, memorized, but it's always pretty easy to solve for on a calculator too, if you forget. Okay, cool. Hopefully all those methods made sense. A lot of practice with trig identities. We'll move on to the next one, which hopefully should be pretty good practice. We are going to try and figure out if the two triangles drawn are congruent and why, if they are. Uh, so let's see. We'll start with the first one, uh, where we have two right triangles that are back to back. They share this side in the middle, uh, and they have a congruent hype. They both have congruent hypotenuses. Um, here, we're thinking about right triangles. Automatically check. Okay, can we use hypotenuse leg theorem? In this case, we have two legs that are congruent, the hypotenuses are congruent. So hypotenuse leg says yes. Um, they are congruent, which usually the symbol is an equal sign with a little squiggle over it. So in this case, it would be triangle, I'll name this point P or something. And it would be triangle uh, SPR is congruent to triangle XPR. Okay. Cool. Next one we have are once again two triangles. They share a line. So, in fact, we can say that this line is congruent on both. But it doesn't even seem like we need that because on each one, we have an angle and then a side and then an angle that are congruent to the other one. Angle side angle is one of our theorems. So yes, they are congruent by angle side angle. Let's say triangle A, B prime, is it a? Yeah, A, B prime, R is congruent to triangle C, B prime, R. Next, we have these triangles, which are connected at point C. We have two congruent legs, but we're not given anything else immediately. However, we can use some of our knowledge of geometry and angles at intersecting lines and conclude that these guys are what we call vertical angles. There are two line segments intersecting and whenever that happens, the angles that are opposite each other are gonna be congruent to each other. And so in noticing that, we've given ourselves a side angle side in order that says that they are congruent. So we can use side angle side and that gives us the congruency. So in this case, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, C. I don't know if I'm I think it should be EDC because I think each corresponding letter should match up with its uh, its match in the other triangle. So E and A are basically the same point on opposite triangles. So I might have been uh, I might have been doing that right. I think I have been doing that right. Okay, cool. All right, now we have 
two triangles. They're not attached to each other. So we can't use anything with that. Here we have two angles and then a side that are congruent to each other. Well, angle and then angle and then side is one of our theorems. Angle, angle, side. And that's all we need. As long as we can find one that works, we're good. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, let's see, this is F, D, E. Okay. And then finally, this last one, we have looking like a kite shape. Uh, we have two sides that are congruent. However, we can immediately notice they share a side in the middle. And now we have all three sides of each are congruent. So we can use side, side, side. So no angles are needed. We can say triangle ATD is congruent to triangle ETD from side, side, side. Okay. Cool. Now these problems are tricky. Um, you're not always given all the information you need. Sometimes you need to notice how things are related to one another to deduce that you may have more congruency than was actually explicitly given to you at the beginning of the problem. Um, and so you just got to keep in mind specifically like the vertical angles and the corresponding angles which is like that one we saw earlier, where for example, these angles would be uh, the same as long as these are parallel. Uh, keeping stuff like that in mind is going to be crucial for solving these problems. Okay, cool. We have one final problem uh, where we're being asked about similar triangles and we will see. So in this case, we know the side length of each side. We don't know anything about the angles, but we do know that one of the similarity uh, theorems that we can use is side, side, side similarity. And what this is really referring to is if we were to take the matching sides, such as, you know, in this case, two, we could match up with four, three, we can match up with five, 6.4, we match up with 3.6. If we took the ratio four to two, five to three, 6.4 to 3.6, if all those ratios are the same, then the triangles are similar. So let's find, let's first find the ratio four to two, which is two, five to three, I'm gonna tell you, not two. 6.4, I mean, at this point, we've already deduced that it's not similar. 6.4 to 3.6 is something, that's for sure. I think it's like 1.75. Um, so, 7 fourths. Uh, I'm not 100% on that, but I know that um, I know that these triangles cannot be similar because they all have different ratios. Okay. Cool. For the last problem, we'll go ahead and do, let's see. We have one smaller triangle nested in a larger triangle. Oh, that was pretty good. Um, 
Now, because of this fact, we know that they share an angle here. So they have that same angle. However, this is kind of redundant as if we are talking about similarity. We have a 54 degree angle and a 36 degree angle here, and a 54 degree angle and a 36 degree angle here. So two of the angles are the same in each case, which means that the angle angle theorem says that triangle ABC is, and we put that one swiggle there for similarity, is similar to triangle AXY. Okay, so this is not similar, and this is similar. Do you uh, scroll back up to problem one real quick? One, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, there's just a question in the chat uh, about uh, a y-intercept at negative six. Just want to make sure that was cleared for everyone. Um, yeah, the, the y-intercept there. Oh, uh, what is the question? Just how did you get the intercept? Oh, oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, my bad. I kind of glanced over that. Um, the y-intercept is where it intercepts the y-axis, which is categorically where x equals zero, right? The y-axis, x equals zero. So plugging in x equals zero to your polynomial is going to give you the one point where x equals zero on your function, which is the y-intercept. So for each case, I just plugged in x equals zero, which ends up just being multiplying all of the uh, zeros together. So three times two times negative one times negative one. And then there's a factor of minus one out the front. So it's six times minus one is minus six. Okay. Cool. Any more questions on these? I know we're, we ran a little bit over. But hopefully that was helpful to work through some of those. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, I, I didn't see any other questions. So okay. cool. um, yeah, if you do have any questions, uh, stick around in office hours. But yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow, uh, 2.30 sharp, um, for functions and graphing. See you guys later. All right, bye-bye. Thank you so much for coming. Bye-bye.